Black Forest Labs has been paving the way in generative AI since earlier this summer when they picked up where Stability AI left off with Stable Diffusion. If you've been following these models at all, you'll know that Stable Diffusion was one of the biggest advancements in open source. It was the first image model that showed that you could actually do significantly more with open source and create more powerful tools than massive competitors like DALI or Midjourney. And today they're continuing this mission with another release of Flux, their version 1.1 Pro release. And Black Forest Labs is quite interesting. And for those of you who didn't know, this company was largely founded with people who were previously on Stability AI's team continuing the mission of creating groundbreaking state-of-the-art generative AI models that are available for everyone to use. So what's new in Flux 1.1? How does this actually line up with this rumored Blueberry model that was teased just a few weeks ago? And where can you actually use this model right now? I'm going to get into all these topics in this video, so welcome to AI Flux, let's get into it. So we started to see Blueberry just a few weeks ago, and no one was really sure what it was. We knew this was an impressive model with similar capabilities both on large and small GPUs like we'd seen with the original Flux model, but it was hard to know really who was behind it. And although we still haven't seen the kind of full release of what Flux AI is planning with AI video, given a number of other incredible AI video advancements this week, this next update is still incredibly impressive. And now we know for sure that Black Forest Labs was behind this new Blueberry model. So they say here that they're announcing Flux 1.1 Pro and the BFL API, which is basically just a white label API hosted by Black Forest Labs for Flux 1.1. And we'll get into why this API is pretty impressive in just a bit. So they say here, today we release Flux 1.1 Pro, our most advanced and efficient model yet alongside the general availability of the beta BFL API. And what I love to see here is that they're still focusing on efficiency and making this model available on as many GPUs as possible, whether you have an RTX 3060 or a brand new RTX 4090 or A100. This release marks a significant step forward in our mission to empower creators, developers, and enterprises with scalable, state-of-the-art generative technology. And the results so far have been pretty impressive. I'll throw up some things that I've seen on X today and it's really, really cool to see that, that this model is still getting better. And I think at this point, this model and these developers are improving their capabilities faster than Stable Diffusion was. Sure, there were a few months when Stable Diffusion progress was completely nuts, but it's really cool to see that Flux seems to be on a steady trend now and is really delivering with these announcements, not just promising features that might eventually show up. So why is this model so impressive? So mostly for speed. They say here that um, this model has superior speed and efficiency when compared to the first version of Flux that was released earlier this summer, which means faster generation times, reduced latency, enabling more efficient workflows, Flux 1.1 Pro, provides an ideal trade-off between image quality and inference speed, which previously was one of the hardest things to do when you were pushing radio sliders back and forth with Stable Diffusion just a few years ago. But the big news here is that Flux 1.1 Pro is three times faster than what's currently available in Flux, and the smallest version of this model is up to six times faster than um, the smaller predecessor of Flux. And I think it's also interesting to note what performance means in these models, because performance in generative image models compared to video or just text models can mean pretty different things. So they say here that Flux 1.1 Pro has been introduced and tested under codename Blueberry into the artificial analysis image arena. So if you saw it in this arena, that is this model. And basically it surpasses every other model on the leaderboard, achieving the highest overall ELO score, which is pretty impressive. So this is kind of a overall score of efficiency, speed, latency, and general capability. And what's cool is Flux 1.1 Pro handily outperforms Flux 1 Pro and a number of other even closed source models like Midjourney version 6.1, Ideogram V1, and Playground V3. Uh, and it's funny because looking at Dolly 3 HD, it's just basically no longer a relevant model here. Sure, it's great if it's included, but it's really cool to see open source still massively pulling ahead. And cost is another really interesting angle here. It turns out that Flux 1.1 might actually be one of the cheapest models to run in terms of local inference, which is mostly looking at compute, and then also on their new BFL API, which means that if you have a product that needs this kind of a function, doing it here might just make sense. So it's cool to see that, yes, this is an open source model, but when hosted in sort of a professional centralized way, things are actually quite impressive. And when we look at ELO score for speed, it's also really, really cool to see Flux 1.1 Pro completely obliterating all of the competition, including its previous version. And the thing that I find most interesting here is that Flux 1.1 Pro is actually still significantly faster than uh, Flux 1 Chanel, which was one of the smaller models that they would offer. There are also some really interesting features coming out probably within the next few weeks. 
So one of these big ones is fast high resolution, which is something that we got to see in certain versions of Stable Diffusion 3 Turbo and some kind of modified versions of that model. But what's really cool to see here is they say, yes, that this will be natively set up for fast ultra high resolution generation coming soon to the API, but not necessarily the model just yet and generate up to 2K resolution images without sacrificing any of the prompt. And what's cool is on launch day, this model is available to use right now with Together AI, Replicate, FAL.AI, and FreePick. The BFL API is basically just this all provided as an API. The endpoints and kind of how you use this are really pretty similar to just about any other API. Sure, there's some interesting features in terms of scalability that are quite cool, but pricing is really the biggest thing here. And likely it's probably just a great way for them to generate some revenue while they're developing these models, which might start to answer the question of how they actually plan to monetize a lot of this where Stability AI, obviously, at the end of the day, just couldn't find a way to actually make money doing this. And they're looking to hire developers, so definitely let them know if you're looking for uh, an engineering role or something in their org. I'll link in the description below. So this is Flux 1.1 Pro on Replicate. I still think Replicate is one of the most interesting uh, API platforms just because their design is quite different and their GPU infra is really, really interesting and also really well built, mostly because I know someone who works at Replicate but yeah, so I'm gonna try something that's pretty advanced here. So I'm going to include, because obviously we have to keep some of that in here. I'm going to say terminal screen spelling of the words Flux 1.1 Pro, Soviet era steampunk submarine style of Metro 2033. I wonder what GPU this is running on as well. So it's probably just one of their it was probably an A100. Usually most everything that uh, Replicate does is A100s. Interesting. Okay, so we didn't get a terminal screen. I'm, now I'm going to say cath, uh, a green cathode terminal screen. Very interesting. Uh, they kind of included a person here. Uh, it's very cohesive though. And I think it may have kind of confused when I, I gave it too many references like Metro 2033. So this looks like it might be kind of a stateroom or something that's still in a submarine, but we got a cathode ray terminal with Flux 1.1 Pro spelled. Uh, this still looks pretty Soviet, you know, the, the seats and whatnot. The window with light coming in, you know, that's, that's a little bit less um, maybe submarine-esque, but this still looks pretty cool. I'm going to try one more prompt with, with something very different and this time with no text. I'm going to say... A cloud world where a scavenging is landing after a long excursion. This is actually quite impressive. So we didn't actually get kind of a settlement, but we got a really interesting looking spaceship with a really nice background and, a, and really nice balance in the images. This is one thing that a lot of open source models at one point kind of struggled with was just balancing um, the subject, balancing the background, making it all look nice, and then not having any of it be too overbearing. I think this is one thing that Midjourney still kind of struggles with in terms of understanding what you actually want or what you kind of want the core subject to be, which can be interesting. And what's great is now we have a really reliable open source model that can do text nearly perfectly um, without needing kind of a very powerful GPU. So this is incredibly exciting. Obviously, we still have yet to see what uh, is coming next from Black Forest Labs. Eventually, we will we really hope to see this incredible um, AI video model. Right now, we've obviously just seen kind of the starting bits of this with what might be making the frames involved here, but it's going to be really cool to see what comes from them shortly. I'll be making a few more videos about this topic and kind of with what GPUs are best, what um, I think is a really great way to deploy this model, and I can't wait to see the next updates from Black Forest Labs. So let me know what you think in the comments. Are you really excited to use this? Would you rather just keep using Midjourney? I'm always interested to see what you guys have to say. As always, I hope you learned something in this video. If you like our content, please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you in the next one.